Hello again, this is Carolyn from Carolyn Star Products with my latest video. I have a website, carolynstarproducts.com with articles and videos on tips for living a happy life. But today, this is my next video entitled UFOs and Extraterrestrials. So I hope you will enjoy. UFOs and extraterrestrials. Now for all the skeptics and non-believers, it's time to keep an open mind. This is a day of strange and unusual and unbelievable things happening that 20 years ago you would not have believed, but today it's true. 20 years ago, Today, who would have thought that scientists would have discovered time travel, wormholes, life on other planets 20 years ago? No, but today it's happening. They found multi-universes, time travel, wormholes. So, the unbelievable is becoming believable. So, UFOs and extraterrestrials, 20 years ago, one or two sightings, three or four or five or six here. Today, many, many sightings worldwide. So, it's time to start paying attention to what's going on around you. It's getting harder and harder to deny that UFOs are real because the sightings everywhere worldwide being reported and videos being downloaded to YouTube. Twenty years ago this was not the case. Even the news media media is reporting UFO sightings ten years ago. That didn't happen. So things that were scoffed at and ridiculed and debunked are turning out to be real today. And because the scientists have lately discovered traveling through wormholes and multi-universes and time travel which will make you travel large distances of space in very little time is giving credence and believability to UFOs being on Earth today because it's revealing the way that they're using to get here which makes it believable that they're here This report will not be about abductions and greys and reptilians and negative extraterrestrials not to promote fear. This video and report is the good news, the good side of the extraterrestrial issue. For my findings and my research show a good side. There is definitely a good side and that's what I'm going to report on, the good side of the extraterrestrial and UFO issue. Did you know that most of the extraterrestrials that have been visiting Earth today and in the past are humanoid and look just like you and me? Did you know that the, that the greys and the reptilians are just a minority, just the ones causing trouble? That most of the ETs are humanoid? And that's what I'm going to be discussing, the human-looking extraterrestrials. The human-looking extraterrestrials that are here to help mankind. This information that I'm giving you today is not off the top of my head. It's, it's research that I've done for, for my interest in UFOs for over 30 years. I've read many books, attended many seminars, listened to many videos and YouTube videos and brought many videos and I've listened to the testimony of credible people from the military and from programs, TV programs, and radio programs. So I've, and I've compared everything and put it together from what I've studied and learned and researched. That's where this information is coming from, from my research, seminars, and conventions that I've gone to, books and videos, and I put it all together into something that I believe that is true, not for my beliefs, but because of my research. And if you don't accept what I'm saying, that's your right. But please don't deny what I'm saying because it may sound strange and unusual. The strange and unusual is, is real today. Just do your own research, come to your own conclusions. But 
when you listen to mine, it's from my research. So I hope you enjoy. Our sun is just one star in over two to four hundred billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So there are approximately four, 100 to 400 billion known galaxies in the universe. And there are billions of stars in each of those galaxies. Now scientists are finding that most stars have planets and solar systems circling those stars. And these solar systems have several planets circling their stars just like our own solar system. So now this is overwhelming scientific evidence is being discovered every day that life in the universe is plentiful and abundant. Now the calculations are evident that we are not alone in the universe. Water is being found everywhere in space, which is a guarantee uh, that other life exists in the universe. Many planets have already been cataloged to be possibly able to support life and science is coming very close every day to finding Earth-like planets in this galaxy. Now, At this time in history, how can anyone believe that there is no life in the universe but our own? Now, Because we cannot travel to other stars does not mean that other civilizations 100 to millions of years ahead of us in evolution haven't found a way to travel to the stars or even reach our planet. So this would mean that there is great evidence that our planet has been visited in ancient times as well as today from the hieroglyphics and the ancient ruins all over the world and the UFO seen in the skies today more than ever before. If you have watched the popular TV show Ancient Aliens, you will know this to be true. And in the last 10 years, more and more UFO sightings have been reported and have even reached the news media. Sightings are so numerous at this time that there cannot be a cover-up. People are taking pictures with their cell phone cameras and are posting them on the YouTube for the world to see. It's getting harder and harder to hide or deny that UFOs are real. And now in the years past it was difficult for scientific minds to believe that it was possible to travel such long distances in space to get to Earth. So they discredited UFOs as being real. And it was not believed by science to be possible. However, today, modern science is discovering ways to travel through what's being called wormholes that allow long travel in long distance of space in a very short time. And these wormholes would definitely explain how the UFOs and extraterrestrials are traveling such long distances to reach Earth. And this would make it more believable. Wormholes have been explained in detail today by the astronomers and theoretical physicists, as well as mentioned in the media. Today there's knowledge about traveling through dimensions to wormholes, black holes, to transcend large distances in space. By jumping dimensions and universes via wormholes has become common knowledge today. And it also has been reported by many sources of information that the government has back engineered technology from crash UFOs. The crash UFOs in the 40s and 50s. One of them being in Nevada in the late 40s. And it has been reported that the technology from those craft crashed UFOs became knowledge for technology for today's computers and computer chips, the advanced cell phones and iPods and lasers, and much of the advanced technology of today has been reported to have come from technology from crashed UFOs. Now governments want to maintain power and control by keeping people, according to several sources, dumbed down with chemtrails 
GMO foods, fluoridated water, fructose, corn syrup, and aspartame, and artificial foods and sweeteners, HARP, and other surveillance technology to prevent mental and spiritual advancement of mankind that would give people personal freedom and power. This would happen if this would happen then the governments would lose power and control. So what the cover-up, government cover-up is actually all about according to many many sources is power and control of the people. Power and control of the people has been stated by many sources to be the reason for the cover-up. For many sources say UFOs have been here thousands of years and, and have come back quite openly in the 40s and the 50s. They were seen and then they were denied and debunked. And many people are wondering, if it's true, why is the government denying and debunking them? As I just stated, it's all about power and control. According to many sources over the years, it's being said that there is a secret shadow black ops government that has back-engineered crash UFOs and secretly have very advanced technology which al allows them to travel in space, have bases on the moon, have bases on the Mars. It has also been reported by several sources that the government has made alliances with greys and reptilians for the exchange of technology and that the shadow secret government has knowledge for traveling in space and time travel. This is what I have come to learn in many of years of research from many, many sources and conventions. This is what is being said. Of course, there is no truth. This is what is being reported. And it has been said many reports, conventions, and books, and contactees that an alliance was made with the Greys for technology and that alliance was offered by the humanoid positive ETs that was denied that would have given mankind power and control over his own life but according to reports the government did not want the people to have power and control over their own lives because they would lose power and control over the people so, it's all about power and control. So what happened was the positive humanoid ETs were turned down f because the, the government wanted to get technology from the graves to control everything. But the positive ETs have been here for thousands of years and they wanted to help mankind to improve spiritually and physically. So when the government denied their treaty, they went directly to the people in the 50s. So they w reached out to the people to help the people individually and bypass the government, which for the people, which was a very good thing. So they, it was established what is called today contactees where the good ETs, the, hum the humanoids, personally contacted through telepathy and through personal visits, uh, liaisons with certain people who took to them naturally and they connected with people and, and wanted to help individuals that they called contactees to spread the word to the people. The first thing was that nuclear arsenals and nuclear weapons were extremely dangerous and they wanted to get the word out not to use nuclear weapons because humans do not know the danger of nuclear weapons. Nuclear weapons can not only blow up a planet but it also can affect other worlds and other planets and other dimensions. So 
the positive ETs wanted the world to know that they that is one time that they will in, intervene in this society. They want us to have our own society and and have our own way and our own peace and run our own government. But they cannot allow nuclear weapons to go unchecked because they not only affect this world but other worlds and theirs. So they wanted the people to know that that's the one time that they will intervene in this planet if nuclear weapons are used. So they came together with many, many people in the 50s on up till today, which they call contactees, so they can reach the people directly for the good of mankind since the government refused involvement with the good ETs and chose the greys instead. The good ETs, the humanoids, went directly to the people and contacted many individuals and which individuals became to be known as contactees. All the contactees were contacted by benevolent human looking extraterrestrials that look just like humans. And most ETs visiting coming to Earth are humans and friendly. The reptilians and greys are the negative minority groups that are here causing all the problems, the abductions and the, the scary scenarios. And they don't look like humans. They're very scary. The benevolent human races are coming to aid and help mankind in his spiritual and economic growth. And they are in the process of removing all the hostile aliens from the earth at this time. Governments having to form hostile allies with these aliens for power and control may be regretting their decision because these aliens, greys and reptilians, have have not held up to their side of the alliance and they've become very dangerous. So the positive ETs are in the process of removing these aliens from the planet. And so the government doesn't want you to know that they're human aliens. They want to keep fear. Fear going ongoing by putting out propaganda and news about greys and reptilians, using their people to put out fear, fear information and publicity to keep the people afraid by making them think that the greys and the reptilians are the only aliens on the planet, which indeed is quite the opposite. The greys and reptilians are just only two races here. There are many, many, many other races of which I will mention later on that are humanoid and are here to help mankind. So it's, it's the government and Hollywood who's spreading all this fear, prawn, and scary movies in Hollywood to keep people afraid. Keep people from knowing the real truth. So the real reason for the cover-up is the government is afraid the good extraterrestrials or humanoids have technology that could free people you know if they have technology to travel space and to get here, they have technology for a better way of life. That's understood. If you can travel in space, you have good technology. And what is that technology that they want to keep hidden and sabotage and keep down? The free energy. Positive aliens have free energy technology where we would never have to pay a power bill again. I'm hearing we could put units in each house, free energy, and free equipment, free technology for our cars and our houses, no more power bills, a way of technology to grow food easily and naturally, organic food, all over the planet for everybody. There would be no more hungry, hungry people. They know a way of technology to grow food, organic food, for everybody. And they also have technology to cure every known disease. Technology for curing every known disease. Which you don't have to take medicines and have surgery. We won't even need doctors. No more pharmaceutical drugs and no more GMO food. They have technology for travel. To purify and clear the water for health, food, 
and power. So that is the real reason for the cover-up. And the contactees have been given this information, how to implement this. So what's been happening to the contees? Contactees have been contacting the good aliens who are trying to get the word out to the people. They've been sabotaged. They've been discredited. Some of them even threatened their lives. Lives have been threatened. They've been suppressed because of power and control. Because if we were friendly with the good aliens, if we wanted them to land, if we listened to what they had to say, we would be in control of our own lives. We wouldn't need government control. We'd be in control of our own power and food and energy. But you see, the government can't control you when you when you can can control yourself, and it makes perfect sense when you think about it. For they're saying that oh, they they're afraid, they're not ready, they would panic. Give us a break. We're adults. We can handle the UFO disclosure. We can handle it. We're not ten year old children. We can handle it if it's done in the right way. We can handle it. It has nothing to do with not being able to handle disclosure. It has to do with power and control. And the contactees are coming out now with ways for new energy and it can, it can no longer be suppressed. And the higher forces and angels and powers are protecting the light workers and the contactees so they cannot be killed anymore. They're protected. So it is new energy going to be able to be released soon. So people need to get ready for changes. Open up your minds and listen to what's going on around you. Because when they do land, you want to be in the know and be ready, not be in shock. You want to know what's going on. So pay attention to what's going on around you and do your own research if you don't believe what I'm saying. Because it might sound a little bit odd or crazy, but hey, 30 years of research is not coming off from the top of my head. 30 years of research contactees everywhere, not just one contactee, hundreds of them are saying the same thing. When one person says something, yeah, it might be wrong, but when a thousand people say something, you, you listen. It makes perfect sense for the, for the non-disclosure issues. This nonsense about us being not being able to handle it is ridiculous. We're mature people. We can handle UFO contact. No, the real reason, I tell you, the real reason, if you think about it, is power and control. Now, according to research in the hieroglyphics and the writings in the Vedic, Hindus, and Buddhists, and ancient writings of old, extraterrestrials have been visiting Earth millions of years. There's been many civilizations that's come and gone because of natural disasters and wars in the skies. So the UFO history is old, it's not new. If you do your research, They've been everywhere. In the Bible, in the Vedas, in the Hindus, whenever you read about something, clouds in the sky. That's an old language for UFOs. They didn't have the word flying saucers and UFOs thousands of years ago. They were, they were called those who came from the sky, the Anunnaki. They had different names for it back then. Some called them the gods, some called them angels. Because the technology was so far advanced, when you see something come out of the sky, something frightening and awesome, you think it's more than it is. You might call it God, you might call it angels, but you being ignorant and ancient and savage at the time had a different way of referring to what we call UFOs. There was a group of aliens called An Inky and Anil who was supposed to have genetically engineered. If we have just begun finding out about genetically engineering. Think about thousands of years ago when ETs have been doing it. Thousands of years. So they came supposedly to the what's been written. In Inky and Enlil came to engineer, genetically engineer an ancient man, one of the ancient apes men, to upgrade their genes and make them humanoids so they could use them in Samaria to help with the gold. That's one of the stories. Of course, that's just one set of ETs. There's been many different ETs in and out of here for thousands of years. I'm sure you've heard about 
Zechariah Sitchin's Sumerian text about the Anunnaki who came, genetically engineered humans, to use them to mine the gold. And then later, a uh, sunken land called Lemuria. There's been a lot of evidence. Scientists doesn't want to agree to Lemuria, but there's been a lot of evidence, even in the ancient texts of the Greek mythology, about Lemuria and Atlantis. And they're finding evidence of uh, sunken underground ruins now that they're trying to keep held down and held back. They don't want you to know that Lemuria and Atlantis really was. So there were colonies coming to this earth from extraterrestrials thousands of years with the primitive man referred to as God or angels. And they, they called them those who came from the sky. Now there were colonies, extraterrestrials have been coming here for thousands of years bringing colonists and settlers here and have been con connecting with the primitive man for thousands of years. Let's go back to Lemuria. One of the first settlers were humanoid aliens from all over the galaxy, which founded Lemuria. The main ones were called Palladians. I'm sure you've heard of Palladians in the Pleiades. And then later on, there was another colony which founded a land in the, in the middle of the Atlantic called Atlantis. I'm sure you've heard the legendary Atlantis, which is real. So there were colonies from all over the galaxy, mainly the Palladians again, amongst other ones, who colonized Atlantis. Then they're intermingled and married with the hominids here, which, which is the beginnings of our Homo sapien species and race. Back then it was called, in the Bible it's called the Garden of Eden. So at Lemuria and Atlantis was the first, one of the first two colonies of extraterrestrials on the earth. Then when Atlantis and Lemuria sank in war and natural disasters, the uh, remnants and the ones that escaped their, with their lives migrated to India and Egypt, which started the Indian Vedic religions and gods of, of India. Then they went to India which and Israel, which started the uh, Adamic gods of, of, of the Old Testament. Then they went to South America. Quetzalcoatl is noted as one of the gods, alien, they call them gods in South America. So you see extraterrestrials, so-called aliens, have been here for thousands of years, not just in the last 40 years since the 1940s. The current century, they've come back but they've been here for thousands of years. According to the history, they went away for a while to allow us to mature on our own without any interference, to find our own way. So they all left right after Jesus died. And now they're back. They see we're in trouble. We're about to blow ourselves up with nuclear weapons and we're getting ready for an ascension, uh, dimensional dissension. So they've come back since the 40s to aid us and to assist us further. So, but they're going straight to the people. They're bypassing the government because the government refused their aid. So they're going directly to the people now using what's been called contactees to reach the people, to assist the people in this, this day of trying time to avoid nuclear war, to help better our lives, and to help us realize the technology, technology that will help us have better lives. So you see there's Humanoid ETs, much more of them than you've been told that are here to assist. And you might say, well, why don't they land? They won't land because they're waiting for us to accept them and get an invitation. They don't want to frighten us. And so some other people like the government are saying, oh, they're going to start a war. They're going to come down here and control. Well, don't you think they would have done that years ago if they had evil intentions we would all be walking with chains now. Don't you think they've had plenty of opportunity to come down here and take over if that was their motive? They have not done that. They're doing it very slowly by letting us see their ships in the sky so we can become used to seeing them. We can get used to them and invite them down. That's what they're waiting on for us to accept them. They do not want us to be afraid of them. 
that's why they haven't just landed. They're trying to uh, they're trying to get us used to seeing them so that then we'll eventually invite them in. They don't want to frighten us. They want to help us. So now let's go into some of the races that are coming here, that have been coming here for years and are coming here now. All right, there's the Lyrans. It has been said in history that the human race originated from the constellation of Lyra and the first aliens that came here millions of years ago, even before Atlantis and Lemuria, well, 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 Lyrans from the constellation of Lyra. They were very tall giants from Lyra. The first colonies that came to Earth were from Lyra. And the human species is supposed to have originated in the Lyran system, the Lyran constellation. They're called Lyrans. Then there's the Vegans. When there was a war in the heavens millions and millions of years ago with the reptilians and the greys and the humans, the uh, Lyrans migrated to other places to avoid wars and to find peace. So they went left Lyra and went to Vega. So the Vega star system is another uh, area of humanoids, friendly humanoids, that are coming to Earth also. These Lyrans and Vegans came to Earth millions of years ago and started colonies. So the Vegan star system is another place where the extraterrestrials are coming from visiting the Earth. Then of course there's the known Pleiades. The Pleiadians are here now to help assist us. And they migrated from Vega and went to the Pleiades. And the Pleiadians uh, have a big stake in this planet. They, they have done more uh, mingling with us and interbreeding with us than any of the other races. And we look just like them. So we look just like them. They're from the Pleiades. And many of the Indians and several races on the planet uh, are saying that their their home is in the Pleiades. So that's a well-known area of extraterrestrials that are coming. Then another group are from Sirius. There are several races from Sirius. Sirius A, B, and C have been coming here for thousands of years. In fact, the pyramids are aligned to Sirius uh, because their line, if that's a fact, a scientific fact, that the pyramids in Egypt are aligned to the star Sirius because we have a long history with Sirius aliens. Sirius has a blue race and a feline race and a lion race that are very friendly that have been visiting here. The lion, feline people and the blue people come from Sirius. Another group of aliens visiting us are from Arcturus, the constellation of Arcturus. They're very intelligent and brilliant. One of the most brilliant species of all is in the constellation of Arcturus. They're visiting here too. Another race is from Andromeda. The Andromeda galaxy and the Andromeda constellation of the most advanced and spiritually evolved and highly evolved people are the Andromeda. Some people say that all the Archangels come from Andromeda, Archangel Michael come from that area, Andromeda, the Andromeda galaxy, and they're very, very, very evolved into the higher dimensions, 8th and ninth and 10th dimensions, the Andromedans are visiting here too to assist. Another group is Tau City, the Tau City star system. There's uh, aliens here, some undercover here now from Tau City. Then there's the planet Venus. Would you believe there's a race on Venus, underground, uh, an underground uh, civilization on Venus? There are many Venetians here. Many contactees claim to have been visiting the Venetians. I'll go over some of them later. Then there's Mars. There's races here from Mars, planet Mars. Would you believe there's life on Mars? It's been held back, not being told you at this time. And uh, Richard Hoagland knows a lot about that. Richard Hoagland, I'll speak with, about him later. He's got pictures. Then there's the Zeta Reticulum. That's the Greys. There are many, many races of greys, some of them good, some of them bad. The Zeta Reticulans, I think, may be the bad ones that are causing all the abductions and the problems from the star Zeta Reticula. Then there's the worst of them all, the reptilians from, from many of the many uh, areas they're coming from. The, the most evil ones are from Alpha Draconian, the uh, Alpha Draconian star. They're the ones that's causing all the problems. Metaphor is the devil in the Bible is represented by the Alpha Draconians. They're causing all the uh, the uh, abductions and all the evil and all the negativity and all the wars. They're trying to cause dissension. They're the most evil ones that are here, as a, is the reptilians and the greys. 
another race visiting Earth are called the Tall Whites. There's a contactee that I'll mention later, Charles White, that's been uh, from the military that can tell you about the Tall Whites. Uh, and then there's the Alpha Centauri star system, which is the closest one to Earth. They're good friendly aliens from Alpha Centauri. There's, a, there's one of the contactees who's, who went to Alpha Centauri in the, in the 50s. They're friendly. And then there's the Bernard Star. They're also friendly. They're close by. The Bernard Star, the Bernarians, are another friendly race of aliens. Then there's Procyons from the Procyon Star System, another friendly set of aliens, very advanced, very intelligent. Then, of course, there's the known Anunnaki that are here. They got a bad rap, but there's some good Anunnaki also. The bad Anunnaki, and then there's a good Anunnaki from Samaria. So those are just a few aliens that have been visiting here. If I were to mention them all, it would take hours and hours. I only have a limited amount of time. So these are the positive, good aliens that are here to assist us and help us, with the exception of the Greys and the Reptilians. I mentioned them because they are visiting Earth. But the other ones that I mentioned are humanoids, are human, human-appearing aliens that are here to assist us and aid us in our spiritual and economical growth. Now I'm going to mention some known and well and famous alien beings that have uh, that, that are known over the world over. Uh, I'm just going to name a few. There are many, 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 many that I've that that are here. Known alien Simjasa from the Pleiades has, has been contacting several people, including Billy Meyer. She's a Pleiadian, looks exactly human. You'd never know she wasn't a human if she walked down the street. Simjasa. Then there's a group of feline aliens, beautiful beings, intelligent, upright walking, bipedal lions, who were noted in the Hindu scriptures as one of the gods, and they, they pray to them for protection from evil. The Nashringa, the Nashringa is, is the name of the group of feline aliens, very friendly, very tall, very beautiful, very real. They could, they could be called on for protection. They have protected the gods of old and in ancient Egypt, and and uh, they are called Nashringa. And then another another person from Venus that I mentioned earlier, I told you I'll tell you about a Venetian. The very famous Valiant Thor is from Venus. This the only picture of an alien that's available for anybody to see is Valiant Thor, which is which shows you how human he is. Very very human, very, very handsome from Venus, Valiant Thor. Frank Stranges was his contactee, very famous fellow. I went to many of his seminars. In fact, I had some personal experiences at some of Frank Stranges' seminars when something very strange happened. I, I'm wondering if Valiant Thor was in there, in the room at that time and opened the door at one of his seminars. That I, I have a personal experience with Valiant Thor from Venus. And then the next alien is well-known Astar Sharon. There's many, 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 many writings about Astar Sharon. Many, many. There's a well-known alien called Astar. Then, if you look in the hieroglyphs of, of Egypt, you'll see Sekhmet. You might think that's just a drawing, but that's the real alien. That's the real lion being. Sekhmet was a cat alien in Egypt. That's proof there. That was a bipedal cat in Egypt on the hieroglyphs. You better watch those hieroglyphs. They're for real. Real. Sakmet was an alien uh, in Egypt. A cat alien. And then there's a race of, of cats called Pascats. There's been several books written about them. Pascats is a race of alien beings. Well, they may be from Sirius or they may be from somewhere. I think they are from Sirius B. The Pascat race of lion beings. Then there's another hieroglyph in Egypt, in Egypt, of a cat being called Bast, B-A-S-T, which is another alien that's that's uh, in the hieroglyphs in Egypt. These are just a few. There's many, many, many other aliens, uh, famous aliens. These are just a few. These are my favorite ones. That's why I've mentioned them. These are my favorite ones. They're all positive. They're all good. Now, some of the famous books, if you'd like to read from contactees and people who have written books on aliens. There's many of them out there. These are some of my favorites. The Gods of Eden by William Brimley. Eric Von Donegut, who wrote 
his famous book and uh, before I get to that let me mention the species the intelligent bipedal hominid species in the universe there's four different kinds of species in the universe there may be more but they're known to be four homo sapiens humans felines cat or lion beings reptilians we know about them and then there's the bird people some of them are seen on the hieroglyphs in Egypt these are the four main races in the universe there may be other ones but these are the four main ones and these races are also visiting Earth. They're all over the universe, not the galaxy. Four different types of living, intelligent beings. Homo sapiens, felines, reptilians, and bird people. Now to get back to the books that have been written about extraterrestrials, nice books I, that I mentioned a few minutes ago, William Bramley's The Gods of Eden, Eric Von Dominick's Chariots of the Gods, a very, very, very popular book, sold millions. That gets you started in believing in aliens. That's a very good book. Eric Van Dominick's Chariots of the Gods. Then there's Ruth Montgomery, which started me on the path years ago and got me interested in extraterrestrials, was Ruth Montgomery's Aliens Among Us. And then there's uh, Richard Hoagland. There's his website, www.enterprisemission.com. That's the guy that's got pictures of the face on Mars, and he can tell you a lot about life on Mars. And he's very famous. He used to be affiliated with NASA. He, so he's a credible witness and a credible person, very intelligent, and he worked for NASA, so you know what he has to say is true. He left NASA and started telling the truth about things that were going on. He's been around for years, and he's been telling, writing books and and telling a lot of things that are going on behind the scenes that we wouldn't know otherwise if he didn't if he didn't leave NASA and start to telling the truth. So that's Richard Hoagland. And then there's some ET videos there also that you can click on to see very good videos about extraterrestrials. I'll have them on my website for you to click on and get those. And Michael Saller is a, is a, has another uh, good, uh, he has several videos on aliens among us. And then Piola Harris is also another good person who has information and websites on uh, UFOs. So there's a lot of people, that's just a few, that has great information on UFOs. Now those books I mentioned may be out of print. They're very old, old books. So I, you can get them on Amazon.com. You can get anything you want actually on Amazon.com if you're interested in any of those books I just mentioned, Aliens Among Us, Chariots of the Gods, or they're uh, they're out, maybe out of print because they're such old books, but if you can't find them and you'd really like to find them, you can get them on Amazon.com, uh, which has all the old stuff there available for you. Now, these are my favorite contactees that have been around since the 90s to today. These are my mentors and people that I listen to. They're credible. They're military people. They're intelligent. They're, they're not debunkers. They're not trying to give us lies and turn us around to the wrong information. These people are legit as far as I'm concerned. I've tested them. I've been listening to them for years. They have excellent information. You can do a YouTube search on them or you can do a Google search. You'll find many videos. You'll find many books. You'll find many conferences. And these people are fascinating. You know, they'll keep you on the edge of your seat. They, will, they have very, very, very fascinating information. They've They've uh, kept me up to what's going on over the last 30 years. But the one on the top of the list is my favorite mentor, James Gillian. I trust what he has to say because James lives in, in a place that has UFO sightings every day. Did you hear me? Every day. And he's a contactee. He contacts them. He's, he's The news media knows he's there. And they've been trying to debunk him because he's, he's the real thing. They've been trying to debunk him, but they can't. He is in, in uh, very good contact. I'll have information on him. You can visit his ranch, and uh, I guarantee you, if you want to see a UFO, you go to get James's ranch, and I guarantee you, you will see one. And he has all good information about what they're doing, who's here, what they're here for. He's in a, he's very psychic. He had an out of body life, and death experience as a child, so he has a radio broadcast. And he's a, he's a good source of information. That's that's legit. 
Right next to him is Daryl Anko, who channels Bashaw, fascinating information in YouTube videos also. Michael Ellijohn has been around for years. He and Laurora Light are contactees. They have a lot of information about aliens that have been here for years. Very good source. Michael Sala, another very good uh, researcher. I don't think he's in a contactee, but he's a researcher. He has very good information. Then there's Alfred Lamont Weber, who has very good information. He's, he, he does interviews with a lot of contactees. His website is fascinating. He has a lot of, of videos and a, and a, a internet broadcast where he's done interviews for fascinating contactee people. So you'll find a lot of fascinating information on Alfred Lamont Weber's YouTube video place and his website. Then another very intelligent person who has a lot of information is David Wilcox. Very good information. Another person is Dolores Cannon. Very good information. Then there's Laurel Magdalene Eisenhower, the great-granddaughter of President Eisenhower, who's also a contactee. Very good website and very good information. Then there's Richard Hoagland, who worked with NASA, defected from NASA, and is telling the truth about what's really going on in NASA. Very, very, very good, fascinating information and website. Then there's Robert Dean, a military person. The military people are credible because they're military. When a military person tells you about UFOs, he's a credible witness. Then there's Charles White, who I told you earlier that uh, channels the tall whites. Fascinating videos, fascinating books, fascinating information about a race of aliens living in Nevada, in the Nevada mountains uh, that, are, that are in connection with the governments. It's supposed to be good, though. These are good ETs, I think. And Charles White has fascinating information on them. Then there's Alex Collier, been around for about 20 to 30 years. Fascinating information about, uh, about Andromeda aliens in the constellation of Andromeda. Fascinating guy, fascinating information. So I'm going to have some links to these people on my website. And at the end of this video on YouTube, I'll have some links. All of these people will give you fascinating, legitimate information about what's going on in the extraterrestrial world. They're going over the races of extraterrestrials and letting you know about what they're here for, who they are, where they come from, what their agenda is. They've done a lot of research. They've interviewed a lot of people. So you can't go wrong by listening to these people. I can't, I've left some people out, but these are the main ones. These are my favorite. These are legitimate contactees and researchers. Now these are the old contactees. When contactees first started up in the 50s and 60s, these were the first contactees in the 50s and 60s. These are the ones that got all of the hassle and the discredit and the, uh, the, 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 trying to debunk them. But they were real, but the government tried to, tried to, to make you believe they weren't. These, these took all the, all the back slack and the, and the debunking, but these were the real people that got it started in the 50s and uh, I was a part of one of their organizations, George King uh, was one of them that I was a part of his organization. But these are good people. They have good information. They were the first contactees in the 50s. Howard Menger, I mean, you may have heard of some of them. They, you might find them on YouTube or do a Google search. They, they are all were contactees of humanoid aliens. And that's why they were trying to be debunked because of government didn't want you to believe there were humanoid aliens. They wanted you to believe in the greys and the reptilians. These were all contactees of humanoid aliens. Howard Menger, George Van Tassel, George King, George Adamski was channeled a Venetian. Frank Stranges was channeled a Venetian. Valiant Thor. Now, I'm familiar with Frank Stranges because I used to go to his seminars. And and then I used to go to, I was a part of George King's organization for a while, for a while too. He, uh, he contacted the, <coughs> the aliens in this solar system from Venus, Mars, and Jupiter. And then there was Daniel Fry and Elizabeth Clara, which contacted the Alpha, uh, Alpha Centurion male, who claimed she was taken to Alpha Centurion by a man that she, that she had an affair with. So all of these contactees were in the 50s. I think they're all deceased now. But they started it up in the 50s, and believe you, they all, they're all legit, even though they tried to debunk them. These people knew what they were talking about. I've read their books, and I'm familiar with a couple of them. So these were the contactees back in the 50s and 60s that got it all started. 
very good source of information if you can look up uh, some of their books and there's some of them on YouTube. George King's organization is still going strong even though he's deceased. And uh, Frank Strange is, uh, they're trying to make a movie of his uh, book with the Valiant Thor. Even though he's deceased, they're trying to make a movie of, of the life of Valiant Thor, which is in the making now. So these people are very fascinating, very interesting. Howard Menger, George Van Tassel, George King, George Adamski, Frank Stranges, Daniel Fry, and Elizabeth Clare. You may find their books on Amazon if, if they're out of print. These are all these are all the contactees that got it started in the 50s. All of them very good and very legit. I just wanted to mention that the I wanted to emphasize the military people that were uh, contactees because I want to emphasize their credibility. When you're in the military and serve the military, you are credible, even though you are a contactee. So I wanted to mention that Robert Dean and Charles White were in the military. They worked in the military when they were having their contacts. So that makes them very credible because they were very high in the military. And then there's Richard Hoagland who worked for NASA and he defected so he could tell the truth about what was going on. So that makes him very credible too. Now you see here some broadcast shows. I want to mention those because they're internet and YouTube broadcast radio broadcast shows on the internet that you can listen to weekly. So very good shows and updates on the extraterrestrial phenomenon. So of course you've heard of ancient aliens. You can listen to that. And then there's a Project Camelot Portal dot com, which is another very good website for uh, uh, updates every 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 uh, very often about the, the issues of UFOs. Now there's our internet radio broadcast, which is very good for. Uh, New Age and, and UFO phenomena every day. It's called bbsradio.com. bbsradio.com. That's where James Gillian, the guy I told you that has UFOs at his sites in Washington State all the time. In Mount Adams, he lives right not far from Mount Adams in, in uh, Washington State. Where it's, that's a portal there where they have a lot of strange phenomena and UFOs every night. He has a ranch there, James Gillian, and he also has a radio broadcast every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Pacific time on bbsradio.com. So be sure and listen to James Gillian. And he'll also you know, let you informed on the seminars that he has up there. That he'll invite you where you can go up there to his seminars and visit and you will be guaranteed to see a UFO when you go because he has UFOs up there every Every night because it's supportable there in uh, Washington State by Mount Adam and you hear his radio broadcast every Saturday bbsradio.com then another uh, internet radio broadcast weekly broadcast is vortexnetworknews.com vortexnetworknews.com where Aurora Light gives updates and information and news about UFO phenomena too she has a broadcast there weekly then, of course, you know about George Tsoukalos, George Tsoukalos on uh, the Alien TV program. Yeah, he has an alien broadcast on TV, which keeps you update, updated on the ancient aliens and the information about aliens here in the past. It's called Ancient Aliens, George Tsoukalos. And then there's Richard Hoagland's, Richard Hoagland's Enterprise Mission website, and he also has YouTube videos on uh, YouTube. So that's it for broadcast and for military personnel. There you have it. That's the end. 30, over 30 years of uh, research on my part. I'm not the only person that has come to these conclusions. There's thousands of people out there that believe this way, that have come to these conclusions. Thousands of people. I know I've said some things that could seem you know, Im impossible and unbelievable, but because something sounds impossible or unbelievable does not mean that it is not true. And you know, it's better to be awake and aware and prepared for whatever. It's better to be in the know about what's happening on your planet and around you. And it has been said that condemnation without investigation is the root of all ignorance. So do your own research. 
do your own research. Remember, knowledge is power. It's much better to be in the know, be prepared, and in the know of whatever could happen on this planet, or whatever is happening, than to be find yourself thrown unprepared into fear and denial, and which will cause you not to be prepared for what could happen, or ready to embrace things that are good. In other words, you don't want to be in shock. You want to be in the know of what could happen or what will happen. So to say that, have a good life and have a good day. And I hope you have enjoyed what I've had to say. So thank you for listening to my video today. And I hope you have enjoyed what I have to say. And this is over 35 or more years of research that I've done here to get you this information and I'm going to have this this information uh, copied on my website so you can read it and I'll have some links to some videos and, and some other websites and some of the books that I've mentioned to you if you're interested you can, you can find some of them that are out of print on Amazon and so please visit my website I have other articles and other videos Getting rid of arthritis, overcoming diabetes, healing foods, great ideas for working on businesses, benefits for essential oils, getting rid of depression in 30 minutes, herbs and heal, how to get rid of sugar cravings, natural remedies to help you sleep, great products, great ebooks, and one of my latest videos, God, Science, Spiritual Awakening, and of course I'll also have a copy of this video's ETs and extraterrestrials. So until next time in my next video, thank you for visiting me in my new video and have a nice day and have a wonderful life. Visit www.carolynstarproducts.com and have a good day.